This is definitely one of the smallest ARM-based mini PCs that you can put together right now. And as you can see, I mean, we've got a lot of RGB, supports an NVMe SSD, tower cooler, and yeah, this thing is super tiny. What's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at and putting together the new Pyron Man 5 from SunFounder. And basically, what we have here is a mini desktop PC case for the Raspberry Pi 5. And just taking a look at everything in the box, it does seem a bit overwhelming if you're just getting into this. But they have added some really cool features here. And to tell you the truth, this is only 28 steps to get this thing assembled. Obviously, you will need a Raspberry Pi 5, but with that, it does add a tower cooler. We've got an OLED display that'll give us uh, our RAM and CPU usage. We still have access to the GPIO, and one of my favorite parts here is it adds an NVMe drive. So you don't even need to use an SD card with the Pi 5 using this case here. First step here, I'm adding the HDMI slash power and RTC board. So we do have a real-time clock battery built in, and it's going to be adding that full-size HDMI going from that micro on the Pi 5, which is definitely a big plus for a lot of people out there. Next thing we need to do here is add one of these ribbon cables, and they do send doubles of most all of the hardware and the ribbon cables. Instructions are really easy to follow. We've got basically two halves of this case and two acrylic panels that we need to put on this unit. So we'll go ahead and get the Pi and that HDMI board snug down to this side of the case. Next thing I want to get out of the way is adding this power button. And when it comes to the Raspberry Pi 5, we do have a built-in power button. This is basically just going to bypass it so we have one externally on the case. Given the size of the Raspberry Pi 5, I do think that these little tower coolers are massive for this little arm board, but uh, they make it look pretty cool. And it's also going to keep this thing nice and chilly when we overclock it, because of course we can overclock that Raspberry Pi 5. And with the board I have here in the past, I've actually been able to overclock it to 3.1 gigahertz on the CPU and 1 gigahertz on the GPU. If we were talking about an x86 gaming desktop, that might not sound impressive, but when it comes to these Raspberry Pis, those are some pretty high clocks. It definitely helps out with performance and overclocking, but I'd say the biggest upgrade with something like this is the fact that we can add an NVMe SSD. And I'm not going to go with anything fancy. This is a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. It is PCIe 3.0, which is going to be more than enough for this little setup here. And the speeds far exceed any micro SD card on the market. So this really does help out with boot times and app launch times. So those read and write speeds are really going to be up there when you compare it to a micro SD card. Now, one thing I thought was pretty funny here is we've actually got a couple dust filters for these rear RGB fans. And keep in mind, the RGB in this unit is fully controllable from software. I would like to see a version like this, but with all Noctua fans, I think that would be pretty cool. But really, the last thing we need to do before we put the case together is install this GPIO board. And it's more than just a GPIO board. It's actually got some more RGB on it, which is going to be fully controllable. We've also got that OLED panel on the front of it, and this will kind of wrap around the front so we can see it while this unit is booted up. But once it's all assembled, it looks a little something like this, and I did add a heatsink to that NVMe drive. I just had an older Aorus heatsink laying around, so I figured I'd go ahead and use it here. It looks a little more like a gaming PC now. Round back, we've got access to all of the I.O., USB 2, USB 3, Gigabit Ethernet, two full-size HDMI ports, and USB Type-C power in. With this setup, I'm using Raspberry Pi OS, and I have installed the software we need to control that RGB and for that OLED up front. You can find everything over on SunFounder's website, and one of the main ways that I'm going to be gaming on this unit obviously would be emulation with something like Emulation Station, but I've been using Steam Link quite a bit on Raspberry Pis for a while. And for me, and a lot of other people out there, it's actually a really good option. In-home Steam streaming from your main gaming PC using something a bit cheaper, a little smaller. And with the SunFounder software I've installed, there's quite a bit that we can control here. Mainly, it's going to come down to temperature on that CPU, which even with a nice overclock on it, isn't going to hit thermal throttle, given that we have that tower cooler. Information on CPU usage, RAM usage, network, storage, and of course, we can control the RGB. So there's a few different presets here. Going all the way up to performance, those fans are going to be on all the time, or you can set it to a certain temperature. We've also got a few different RGB presets, like rainbow, follow, flow, brightness control here. We can do a timeout on it, and you can actually have this shut off and turn on at a certain temperature. You can set the color to, let's say, red if it's getting too hot. But like I mentioned, with that cooler, you're going to be hard-pressed to hit thermal throttle with this little chipset. 
But checking out some of those presets, we can go up with the speed, up with the brightness. I've been using the rainbow mode, but you can set it to a static color. We've also got that flow mode, so everything kind of goes together. But all the major light is actually coming from that GPIO board that we installed in the top. And just to put it out there, the only performance gain we're really getting here from this case is actually the fact that we've got an NVMe slot. It does make a huge difference launching apps and boot times and things like that. We've also got that cooler, which allows us to overclock, but those are pretty cheap. So just keep in mind, I mean, this case isn't going to double the speed of your Raspberry Pi. But like I mentioned, for this setup here, I'm mainly going to be using it as a Steam Link. So, uh, you know, this will go in my living room, got my gaming PC in my other room, everything set up so we can stream from that to the Raspberry Pi 5. And when I've got it all set up properly, I will probably use Ethernet. But right now we are on Wi-Fi and I mean, we can get a pretty good signal here. I can do 60 at 1080, no problem at all, at least when I'm in the house on my network. And of course, game performance is really going to depend on what kind of hardware you're streaming from. This little setup that I have here, it's got an RTX 4070. Not a problem to run all of these games at 1080, and that's exactly what we can stream them at right here. I personally haven't tried streaming 1440 on Steam Link with the Raspberry Pi, but you know, 1080 is perfect for what I want to do, and I think it looks really good. Final thing I wanted to talk about here was the setup you saw at the very beginning of the video. We've got a Mage Dock rugged portable monitor, does HDMI in, 1080p. Got that connected to the Raspberry Pi 5 in the case. And one of my favorite little accessories for everything, this goes with me everywhere. It's the Re i6 mini backlit keyboard with trackpad. Works over Bluetooth, plus 2.4 gigahertz. I use it on everything from Windows, Linux, Android. It just comes in really handy. And I think they're like 22 bucks. So yeah, that's the setup I have here with all of the minis. And I could have went smaller with the display. I've got a 3.5 inch, a 5 inch, but I really couldn't even see it when I was playing any games or anything like that. So I figured I'd just go with this one here. Moving back over to Steam Link, it's really easy to install. You can actually head to Valve's website. It's just a one liner. Uh, as long as you've got a good router, you should have pretty decent performance streaming from your PC. It doesn't have to be a desktop. You can stream from a laptop if you want to. And I think with the kind of router that I have right now, and even over Wi-Fi, I could probably do 120, 1080, but 60, 1080 has been working great. And I do think it looks really good, even on a larger display. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I personally do like the look of this case. Is it overkill for the Raspberry Pi 5? Yeah, of course it is. You could buy an NVMe hat and a nice little cooler, just get the official Raspberry Pi cooler, do the same thing. But if you want some RGB and kind of a desktop style super mini case, this is actually a pretty cool option. If you're interested in learning a little more about this case, I'll leave some links down below. And like always, thanks for watching.